Every parent hopes their child will be healthy and happy. Unfortunately, this doesn't always happen. Some children develop disabilities that can cause significant social, communication, and behavioral challenges. These children often will need educational services and support from specialized schools like the Benhaven School of Wallingford, Connecticut. Students end up at Ben Haven School often in their adolescent years, although some come earlier. Um, in general, because the program that they're in uh, is having a hard time meeting their specific needs. Yeah. All right. Stand up. Push your chair. We will put together a program that addresses sort of functional reading. So reading for information from a menu, from a newspaper, the computer, um, writing online, email, sending emails. As students get older, we uh, expand to vocational training in the community here at school so they gain some job skills, learn social skills in those community settings. Uh, we provide fitness opportunities for them in the community. All of this, our goal is to have students ready for exiting special education, which for our students is 21, um, getting them ready for the future. So all of our efforts are focused in that way. I think we can improve the outcomes for students with disabilities or with autism specifically by uh, catching it early, you know, providing those early intervention services as early as possible. But the earlier the better, and the research shows that that's true, um, and we see that here, that if kids start those, um, that service early, you know, their outcomes are better, their language develops better, the communication skills are better. The reason that early intervention leads to better outcomes is that by the time a child becomes an adult, the brain's pathways have been formed. You can see these in an MRI where the pathways are shown in white. If you go back in time, you can see that a newborn has very few of these pathways. That's why if we can know at birth that a child is at risk for autism, then we can have a significant impact on that child. Up until now, this has not been possible. But now, through the work of Dr. Harvey Kleiman at Yale University School of Medicine, we can actually figure out if a child is at risk for autism. Dr. Kleiman can assess this risk by looking at the placenta under a microscope. The big issue in autism has been diagnosing autism early. Why is that so important? Because the earlier you can diagnose autism, the more impact you can have on the child. Why is that? Because the brain of a child is really unformed when they're born, but every year that goes by, the brain forms and locks down pathways more and more. So that the earlier you can diagnose the chance of having autism, the better the outcome. The problem has been, how do we do that? And really, up till now, there hasn't been a way to do that. But based on research that we've been doing here in my laboratory at the Yale University School of Medicine, we figured out a way to diagnose autism risk at birth. And amazingly, and really quite a surprise to me, it's by using the placenta. The way that I found out about the placenta ASD test and my decision to have that test done was I was pregnant with my second daughter, Dania, and I was talking with my uh, obstetrician, and we were just kind of talking back and forth about what I did in my field and my work with children with autism, and he uh, mentioned that he had been at a conference at which Dr. Clement had spoke about uh, this test that was potentially available for being able to, to assess whether a child was at risk uh, for various developmental disorders and there was not a lot done at the time so I you know being interested went back and did some research and read the initial articles and decided well this would be something that would be of interest to me so Daniel was born and we uh, filled out the paperwork and sent off the samples and we got a call that the test had shown that she was positive it was suggested to us by Dr. Kleiman that we maintain some just some monitoring and some vigilance regarding her development and that this was a check engine light and this was a way for us to just be aware that potentially if things were, you know, things started seeming like they were off track that we would need to get back on track with those things. So here's an example of something I don't think that I would have caught had I not 
been aware that she had a positive placenta ASD test. I would not have caught the fact that she was not responding to loud noises, sounds, and eventually her name when you were standing in a certain distance behind her. Not having known that Daniel is uh, potentially at risk for developing an autism spectrum disorder, I believe that catching the hearing and the non-responding earlier and also having work in this field that changing and modifying the behavior of a very young infant is much easier than changing the behavior of an older child who has had much more time to have those behaviors and those patterns of responding reinforced for years. So changing what was off track for only several months versus changing what's off track for many, many years is a very big difference in terms of the development of a child and missed potential interactions. So I would say that had it continued along the same progression and she continued not to respond or at any point pick up naturally responding, it would have been much more difficult to change her behavior later on and she would have missed many things in her environment. She definitely got a lot of one-on-one -on -one quality time as we went through this, which was, I don't think, harmful for any child. We spent a lot of time with her just playing and uh, teaching her back and forth responding. The number one benefit was that we were able to make some very minor changes in some behaviors that would have become more problematic had they not been identified earlier. Chris was the first mother to have her baby's placenta looked at for the potential risk for autism. The Kleiman Laboratories at Yale University is now ready to test every child's placenta with the Placenta Autism Spectrum Disorder Test, or for short, the Placenta ASD test. The test begins with the birth of a child. Following that, the placenta is collected, stabilized with fixative, and prepared for shipment. Once the placenta is received, it's removed from its packaging. And four random pieces are taken, placed into small plastic cassettes, which are then brought to the histology laboratory for processing. The histology laboratory converts those pieces of tissue into wax blocks, which are cut. So they can be examined under the microscope. for are the abnormal trophoblast inclusions or abnormal folds of the sections of the placenta. What I do is count how many I see and in the four slides if I see three or more of these trophoblast inclusions we know that that placenta comes from a child who is at increased risk for developing autism. It doesn't mean that they will develop autism, it simply means that they're at increased risk for developing autism. Why is that important? Because if you know at birth that a child is at increased risk for developing autism, you can follow that child. You can make sure that they reach all the appropriate milestones. And the Centers for Disease Control has actually made milestone lists for children at two, four, six, eight, 10 and 12 months and parents can look at those and make sure their child is following those developmental milestones normally. Says what? Do you remember that polo game game? Yeah. Um, That's what um, I'm excited about with the placenta ASD test yeah. that we can offer for families a test that can give them an indication at birth whether there is a risk for autism so that we can do things for this child and the family to give those children the highest potential possible.